Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for April through July. Over the last two weeks, we've seen precipitation continue to move across the Great Basin as storms track through the region. We have seen precipitation in nearly all higher elevation sites across the Great Basin. Some drier areas have been southeast Utah. However, over the last two weeks, we've only seen above normal precipitation over parts of central and northern Utah and into parts of Nevada and western Nevada and the Sierra and small parts of Idaho. But for the most part, we've seen generally drier conditions over the last couple weeks and most of the rest of the Great Basin. Over the last 30 days, we've seen cooler temperatures across much of the west, including all of the Great Basin. And precipitation in the last 30 days has also generally been only above normal into parts of central and western Utah and into parts of southern Utah, but small parts of western and northern Nevada into southern Idaho. Otherwise, central Idaho and southern Nevada still remain below normal. Looking at our percent of normal precipitation since the beginning of the water year on October 1st, you can see the only areas that are near to above normal are areas over northern Nevada, northern Utah, into southern Idaho, and western Wyoming. Really, the rest of the Great Basin, including central Idaho and the southern half of the region, have generally seen near or below normal precipitation. However, this is really not reflected in the snowpack at all. We are seeing near to above normal snowpack across much of the Great Basin, especially across Nevada and Utah down into Arizona. However, over central Idaho, we did see the snowpack increase to near normal briefly earlier this month, but has now dropped back to below normal. And this will likely be our peak snowpack for the season. Looking at our precipitation and when it falls, where it matters for fine field growth, where monsoon rains matter, so where precipitation during the monsoon months of July through September, when we see precipitation then, that precipitation will perpetuate fine field growth the following year in areas shaded in blue. So for the Great Basin, that's generally the Arizona Strip, southern and eastern Utah, and small parts of eastern Nevada. Looking at our monsoon last year, we did see some above normal precipitation over eastern Nevada and over parts of southwest Utah during the monsoon season. So those areas, we could see uh, some new fine fuel growth. But over eastern Utah, likely a not really a giant increase in fine fuel growth from what we saw last year. The bulk of the monsoon definitely hit over the western half of the Great Basin into Idaho. Now looking at where winter and spring rains perpetuate fine fuel growth the following spring. It's mainly in this map on the left, the area is shaded in orange. So you can see that's generally much of the Great Basin, much of Nevada, southern Idaho, western Wyoming, and northern and northwest Utah. And you can see those areas, we did see some above normal fine field growth, uh, mainly over northern Nevada, northern Utah, and southern Idaho. So those will be the areas that from the winter and spring precipitation will be watching for new fine field growth this season as well. So taking that all into account, Again, we're expecting new fine field growth in that central area I just mentioned, but also down into eastern Nevada and also southwest Utah. So what about two winters ago? A lot of there's a lot of talk about two wet winters in a row being really a precursor for some of our busier seasons, and that is true in some instances. So last winter is up here on the left with our snowpack. You can see we had well above normal snowpack across much of Nevada and Utah and Arizona. And then uh, looking at, and this is just our snowpack in February. So this was about a month ago, uh, comparing these two slides. And then up into Idaho was near normal last year. And then this current winter into the spring, we are seeing, again, generally near to above normal snowpack. So still two healthy years of snowpack in a row. And then for our precipitation, uh, we did see a very wet year last year in this upper left image across much of the Great Basin with the exception of central Idaho and parts of southwest Idaho and southern Nevada. And then this past winter, despite the heavier snowpack, we did only see above normal precipitation really over northern Nevada, northern Utah, and southern Idaho. So those areas, again, will be the main focus for watching fine fuel growth going into the fire season. Looking at our soil moisture, because we certainly need moist soils for fuels to grow, we definitely have above normal soil moisture over much of Idaho into northern Nevada and northern Utah. And then looking at our drought monitor, we are really absent of drought across much of the Great Basin, with the exception of the periphery of the basin, which is really just abnormally dry. 
But looking at the image on the right, the drought outlook through June 30th, and we're not really anticipating much drought to develop. The only areas that will continue to watch will be up over central Idaho that have for two winters really seen a below normal snowpack and have seen some drought developing earlier this spring and late winter. So we will be watching that area to see if we have any drought development going into the fire season. Otherwise, our drought has continued to improve, uh, really started about two years ago with our very uh, wet monsoon and wet winter, and then continued over the last 12 months. So you can see the progression from late March in 2023 on the left to our current picture here on the right. Again, just really continuing to improve the drought conditions across the region. And that's really good for the higher elevations. However, for the lower elevations, we tend to burn more acreage and have bigger grass fires in years that we really don't have drought. So anywhere, this is the drought time series from the year 2000 on the left, all the way through 2024. And the black boxes indicate times when we've seen above normal acreage in the Great Basin. This time series is just for the state of Nevada, but just for the sake of ease, it really does represent a lot of the lower elevation BLM lands across southern Idaho and into western Utah as well. So again, we're seeing very similar pictures uh, with some of our bigger years. And again, that is just showing that we have more moisture in place or have had more moisture for fine field growth, giving us those potential for bigger lower elevation fires. So as far as our fuel conditions, much of the Great Basin is still in dormancy, but we are seeing some gradual drying out from south to north, which would be normal this time of year. But our fine fuels, our 10 hour fuel moisture, still showing a very high fuel moistures across the Great Basin. And 100 hours are starting to dry out over southern areas along with 1000 hours. So again, very similar picture here and what we would expect this time of year as far as the drying process, but certainly no critical areas. So putting everything together, we have been in a state of El Nino, but going forward, you can see from this schematic, which are just different models, all each line is a different forecast model, but showing the same general trend going from these warmer waters. These are, this is a forecast of sea surface temperatures, which is indicative of whether we are in El Nino or La Nina. You can see really all um, in agreement that we will see some cooling, transitioning to this neutral area during the fire season, and then eventually potentially into La Nina later this fall. So what this means for us, so this is our typical winter impacts from El Nino, and we do see most of our impacts in the winter. We haven't really seen this true pattern much of the winter, but we did see hints of it at times. And we certainly saw that um, in the snowpack where we saw the heavier snowpack over the southern half to two thirds of the Great Basin and drier and warmer conditions further north. So going forward, our forecast through April, through the first week of April, this is the precipitation forecast for the next seven days. You can see we are still expecting systems to return to the Great Basin, bringing us chances of precipitation, with probably the heavier spot in the next week being over central Idaho, which is certainly welcome precipitation that far north. And then going into the 8 to 14 day outlook, taking us into the middle of the month, we will see a return of drier and warmer conditions going into next week, but then likely a return of storms later in April. So here's the outlook for May, June, and July by the Climate Prediction Center. In the top row are temperatures, so gradually seeing that more warming trend through July with a better chance of above normal temperatures. And then looking at the precipitation, really no strong uh, wetter conditions once we get out of April. Um, really the wetter conditions or the wetter signature is being shifted more to the east starting in May, but really more so by June and July with that drier signature returning to the Rockies and into the parts of the eastern half of the Great Basin. And then the monsoon outlook, this is a very preliminary look at the monsoon for July and August. Right now, indicators are showing possibly cooler conditions across much of the West and possibly drier conditions over parts of the Great Basin for the monsoon season. So this might really set the stage for curing of our fuels and then possibly when monsoon moisture starts to hit Utah and Southern Nevada and Eastern Nevada, maybe a delay in that onset or drier conditions, which might prolong our fire season for those areas. So again, we'll be keeping a close eye on the monsoon. Um, this also could mean, you know, again, less moisture across the Great Basin. Also could mean better chances of dry lightning when we do get lightning and possibly better chances of wind with those cooler temperatures. So definitely some things to keep an eye on that uh, raise our eyebrows a little bit for the fire potential going into the summer. So putting everything together, a really kind of a nice slow start to fire season, which would be normal. We're not right now anticipating an early start to fire season with the storminess that we are continuing to see throughout April. 
um, into May. We are expecting normal conditions and then the fuels will likely gradually cure from south to north on a normal time schedule. Uh, maybe a slight delay depending on the weather going into May. But again, through June, not really anticipating an uptick in fire activity for the most part. We will keep an eye on parts of southwest Utah and eastern Nevada as those areas dry out. If we do have significant fine fuel growth in some of those areas, we could see June become a little bit more active for that region. And then going into July, this is where things should start to heat up and we are our focus really will shift to the lower elevations where we are expecting uh, some increased fine fuel growth and some carryover. So areas of northern Nevada, northern Utah, and southern Idaho. But again, this area certainly could expand. But right now, there are too many, too many weights on the scale that are pushing us towards a better potential of an above normal fire season than not. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that and we'll have more updates for you guys next month.